Hey guys, it is Bronwyn again. <laughs> it is, oh god, what time is it? Um, 11 a.m. It's Tuesday, Mexico City, as per usual. Um, so last time I talked to you guys about formatting my ebooks, and um, I should have mentioned I, I forgot a crucial step in that whole process, which is after you you code your book in. Text Wrangler with HTML, you, you need to import the files to Calibre. Um, and uh, this. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> you probably heard that the doorbell rang. I swear to God, in Mexico City, people just ring your doorbell to sell you whatever. Um, my favorite is like the guy who comes around with belts. Like, hey, I heard you were hanging around your apartment. Um, how would you feel about buying a leather belt at 10 in the morning? Great, of course. Yeah. Anyway, I really hate when people disturb me. Um, it makes me crazy. Anyway, um, okay, so I was talking about converting in Calibre and I, I, uh, your files in Calibre, and I wanted to offer you a little tip. Um, this probably should have been really obvious, but um, you need to have your, your picture files and that are like your author photo, um, any other images that are, are supposed to be in your book, they need to be in the same folder as your HTML file. <laughs> I had a hell of a time trying to figure out why my images weren't appearing. But um, Calibre is a, is a great tool. You can export to Mobi, you can export to um, EPUB. Mobi is the, the Amazon file format. Um, and it's super simple. I recommend using Guido Henkel's um, Zen a formatting guide because he tells you specific little hacks um, instead of just pressing the convert button you should do a couple of little things like making sure the the aspect ratio on your cover is always maintained because you know devices are different sizes so you don't want your cover being like like expanded or contracted in a way that it's it's going to look weird so um, pay attention to those those little hacks okay so now that I exported everything from Calibre um, I had EPUB and Mobi files. I tested them on various devices, as I mentioned last time. Um, what I, I've been doing lately is that I've been actually loading my books on various retailers. Now, uh, I think you guys know that I'm, I'm only, I'm supposed to be publishing the first and second book at the same time. The second book is a copy editing, and uh, I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and load them up, load it up, the first one, in perfect, because as I told you, I, I'm gonna make it perma-free. Um, across all retailers, always free, imperfect book one, that will act as my sales funnel <laughs> to get people to buy the rest of the series. Um, so yeah, so I decided what I, need to, what I needed to do is that it's not so simple just to go on all the retailers and make your book free. Um, Amazon does not accept that. Um, the lowest price point you can set is 99 cents. So you have to do a workaround. Um, Apparently, Amazon cares the most about matching its prices to Apple and to Barnes and Noble, with maybe a Kobo, Kobo being like a distant third. <laughs> so, what you have to do, you can set um, your book as free on Barnes and Noble and Apple, and then you have to email Amazon and you ask them to price match, um, and then they will lower the price to zero. So it's, it's a manual process, it's not guaranteed, but I wanted to get this process started right now so that I can make sure when I launch book two, book one will already be available as free. Um, I have another motivation, which was, as I told you guys last time, I was thinking about making different files for different retailers, because I have a call to action button at the back, which says, did you, you like this book? How about you buy book two, huh? <laughs> Woo, yeah, you wanna do that, right? Um, but I thought it would be much more effective if like there was an Amazon logo on the graphic and then below there's a specific link to the Amazon buy page instead of going to, to a, a buy page on my website. Um, so then for the Kobo, um, Kobo link directly to their buy page. So um, yeah, so I've, I've decided I did different files for um, all the retailers with the specific logos. Um, and that didn't take too long. It was a little annoying because I had to reconfigure all of uh, the graphics at the back. But, yeah, that was a fun day yesterday. 
<laughs> so I just wanted to give you some tips as to um, things that you need when you upload your ebook to the various retailers. Okay, so the first thing is obviously you need your your files from Calibre, your final EPUB, and Mobi. Um, you need um, your cover at a specific size. Um, I think um, you want the biggest size that your designer sent you. Um, I think mine is like 1400 pixels by something. Large size for the, the marketing image that they want. Make sure that you put a smaller size. I think mine is 900 by 600 pic pixels that I actually included in, as the cover inside the file. You want a smaller file size in there so that you don't, your ebook or, is not enormous. <laughs> Um, you need your bank account information. This was fun. You, you got to look up your SWIFT code, your transit number, your account number, uh, all sorts of things you don't want to do. If Maybe if you have a check. I don't have any checks. All that information is on hand. I had to call my bank. Um, but yeah, they need all of that stuff. And uh, there's a little bit of fun, especially with Apple. Apple was ridiculous trying to, I had to search for my specific bank and it, it took forever. Um, you need your tax info. Um, so I don't know how this would work for Americans. I think you just you would enter your your um, uh, your ins social insurance number. That's what we call it in Canada. Uh, thankfully, in Canada, we have a tax treaty with the United States, and normally Amazon would have to withhold thirty percent of your earnings um, in taxes. But Canada has a tax treaty where um, none of those uh, that is withheld. So you have to enter your social insurance number, um, a little scary, but <laughs> into these retailers so that they can process it. Amazon was by far the easiest. They, it was so simple. There was a digital signature process. Um, so, so simple. Um, I think it was the rest of them, like Apple and Kobo, you actually have to fill out a form, scan it, and send it in. Not as much fun, but nobody wants their money to be withheld. So that's another reason to get started on uploading early and not announce because you want to make sure before you you start some serious marketing that you can actually get your money and that the U.S. government isn't going to take 30% of it. So yeah, work ahead. Um, you need your product description. Um, yeah, product description. Make sure that, uh, if at all possible, it is coded using HTML, so any formatting such as M dashes, ellipses, um, bold, um, paragraph tags, uh, italics are maintained in the product description once it is published. And you not, don't just get like, sometimes you see just like, you know, an endless paragraph that's very unformatted. That person hasn't used HTML, so look into that. Um, and especially for Amazon, you want to get crafty with your categories and your keywords. I recommend reading David Gogan's Let's Get Digital. He really goes into depth on how to pick your categories and your keywords because A, you want to be searchable, and B, you want to be in categories where you have the, well, the least amount of competition so that you have a better chance of rising into the top 100, but not so little competition that nobody will ever find you. It's a fine balance. I really don't understand how it works so well yet. Um, and with Amazon, um, apparently um, not all of the categories show up when you are loading your book. So you can mark it as unclassifiable and then email them and pick a specific category that you see on their website um, because not everything is available and you want to sometimes get very specific. Um, okay, so those are some of my tips about loading your book. Um, so yeah, I did Amazon through their Kindle Direct Publishing. Super easy process amazing. Um, less than a day later, my book was already live, approved, visible, awesome. Barnes & Noble, so as a Canadian, um, I can't upload directly to the Nook Press. I think it's only US, UK, and a couple of European countries that can do that. Canada, no. So I decided to use Draft2Digital. Um, Draft2Digital and Smashwords are the main um, kind of third-party retailers, um, they take your book, they sell it into Barnes & Noble, and they get a 10% cut or thereabouts. I picked draft to digital because they pay monthly, <laughs> as opposed to Smashwords, which pays quarterly. That was super easy to upload to Barnes & Noble slash Nook through draft to digital I'm still waiting on approval. 
Um, Kobo, I went directly through their, their self-publishing platform. Super easy again, no issues. Um, uh, they have a great, um, a great platform for, for uploading, so I was really happy with that. Apple, um, I heard from a lot of people that it's really difficult to upload directly to Apple. Some people prefer to go through Smashwords or Draft Digital, but I want my money. Yeah, Apple um, is, it was quite a difficult process. You have to get approved via um, the tax and bank information before you can even upload your product. Um, the interface is definitely not user friendly, but I wouldn't say it's it's super difficult either. So um, I'm I'm trying it out. If it becomes too much much of a hassle, I'll just pull my book and, and go through Draft to Digital. Um, yep. So that's that's the process as we are now um, waiting to be uploaded and. Um, waiting for, for book two so that I can start coding it and uh, upload it as well and get this party started. Okay guys, alright, thanks for listening. Bye.